Number 30. Uh, how long does God's anger last? Who wants to take this one? For his anger is fleeting, but his favor lasts a lifetime. That's from Psalm 30, verse 5, then Jeremiah 17, 4. And you yourself will relinquish the inheritance that I gave you. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land that you do not know, for you have kindled my anger. It will burn forever. I mean, this just sounds like passionate language, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yep. It's not like yeah. he's making a uh, formal philosophical syllogism. You know? Man, I went to the grocery store the other day, and the line was so long. I, I was waiting forever to get my right. groceries. Um, so it's a wonder that I'm actually here now because I was literally waiting there forever. Yeah, a, a lot of these, so a lot of them, they mess up time, right? So they'll ignore like a 400-year difference or they'll take uh, a superlative and just like go nuts with it. So like mm -hmm. call like all, all of something or forever, and then they just like grab it and sprint. They sprint for the contradiction line. Yes. So I haven't brought this up yet, but here's the problem with things like this when you're talking in person. So right now we are dissecting these things and we're in a favorable environment. We're not up against somebody who's alleging contradictions. You know, we're, we're able to work through these things and we've done some research and all that. Um, when you're talking to somebody who doesn't know very much about the Bible, but knows enough to allege contradictions and read it in a woodenly literal way. When you say, oh, forever doesn't mean forever in this passage, or all doesn't mean all in this passage, it can be very easy for the other person to try and call you out and say, oh, well, you're just, you know, special pleading, or you're just making it up, you know, mental gymnastics, you have to do all these mental gymnastics to get over these problems in the Bible that are so clear. But it really is that simple to say all can literally mean all in this one sense and then not mean all in this other sense. There's lots of words we use even nowadays where the two definitions of them are opposites. When people nowadays say, man, I was literally fill in the blank, they usually mean figuratively. Yeah. But they say literally. I was literally, I literally dead. That, that, yeah. <laughs> that joke was so funny. I literally died. Yeah. Talk to any teenage girl. Well, the fact that you can talk right. to any teenage girl means they're still alive and not dead, right? So we don't mean it literally. Um, I would say if you're in a conversation with somebody and you actually get into one of these things and they're alleging, oh, you were doing mental gymnastics by saying all doesn't mean all or whatever, stick to your guns. And point out, hey, we do the same things today. Same kind of linguistics, same kind of speech patterns, uh, idioms, and all that kind of stuff. We still use these kinds of things nowadays, but we don't treat any other, virtually, any other piece of ancient literature or modern literature like the Bible. Nobody does this for other pieces of literature. People just are like intentionally obtuse with this because they don't want to... Well, no, Julian. There's lot, there's Jesus wanted people to cut off their hands. That's <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, well, and gouge out their eyes. Yeah, and gouge out their eyes. I will say, and, the, know, and there was people walking around in first century Israel with just whole planks sticking out of their eyes. Yeah, I will say, when I first became a Christian, I had some questions about that passage about cutting off your hand. I was like, really? Did he really mean that? Is it really like that? I actually emailed um, Craig Keener about that. Oh, yeah? And he hey, was like, they just used hyperbole. <laughs> that was just something that first century Palestinian preachers did, Jewish preachers did. Yeah. Um, so the fact that we've come to these conclusions and we also struggled with this stuff means that other people struggle with it too, which is why we're doing streams like this. People need to know these things. We're, we're kind of in a point at least in America, I'm sure this is the same case in Europe, but I'll just speak for America, where the church is so ignorant to like church history and what the Bible actually says and how to defend your faith. And the other, the outside culture is also so ignorant to these things that we're just kind of talking past each other and speaking nonsense. Mm. And we need to learn the absolute basics again. 
it's like our country is there's like a circle and we went we went from christian to waning christian to post christian and now it's like we're pre christian again where everybody's got to learn the basics so we're going through the basics here hopefully this will be helpful to a lot of people yeah this one kind of reminds me of the uh does god want some people to go to hell um 23 because it <clears throat> you know because uh it seems like also like matthew 25 where it says and they will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life <clears throat> so you know if, if we repent does the anger subside that was to be forever you know so mm. um and who's forever? Is it my forever? Uh, you know, a, a temporary, you know, mortal or God's forever. Um, so it's kind of like whose perspective are we looking at the word forever? Um, and, and is God not capable like we are to have different emotions for different people? You know, like I can be angry with this person, but that doesn't mean I'm angry at everybody all the time forever, you know? Um, and then if that person that, you know what I mean? That person that made me angry, if they came to me and said, Hey, I'm sorry about whatever. I was like, well, now I'm not angry anymore. You know, it's like, why isn't God capable of the same types of emotional responses that we are? But the Bible says God doesn't change. But we do. So if, if we, you know, if we repent, then why wouldn't he respond accordingly? You know? Yeah. And then I think you can also look at anger and I don't want to say replace it with judgment, but also, yes, in a sense. Um, and then with, with judgment, there can be a temporal judgment and there can be eternal judgment. Eternal mm -hmm. being, you know, you get sent to hell. Right. Uh, but temporal, I mean, shoot, you look at Moses because he struck the rock and he he did something outside of God's will. He was mm -hmm. forbidden to enter the promised land. Right. That was his temporal judgment. You know, but God wasn't pleased did, with him. He eventually did enter the promised land. Do you know where? True. Heaven, baby. So at the transfiguration, I had never noticed oh. this before. But I was always sad because he never got yeah. to stand in the promised land. But then at the transfiguration, huh. he appears with Elijah. And I was like, oh. <gasps> Whoa. Isn't that cool? That yeah. is cool. Oh, I love moments like that. Mind blowers. Yeah.